lecture we're going to look at nonlinear solver in petsy it is called as snes and it stands for not the super nintendo entertainment system but it stands for scalable nonlinear equation solver and we've had a look at the newton iterations and all that in python but the fact is when you're trying to solve differential equations when you're trying to construct some residual so the residual is defined as a times x minus b and your target is to minimize this residual so often this can be non-linear it can be polynomial it can be transcendental but what happens when it is non-linear so you need to solve for non-linear algebraic equations and that requires a scalable non-linear solver so the crux of solving um, something which we have already done say for example you want to um, solve some f of x equal to 0 and this is a column vector which contains all the functions and x is the vector x0 x1 and so on i will see in an example what exactly this means so if you have a multidimensional function then f of x plus some step is equal to f of x plus the jacobian evaluated at x times the step plus order s square so this comes from a multidimensional taylor series approximation and this jacobian so what is this jacobian so jacobian is defined as this particular matrix so del f naught del x naught del f naught del x1 so on del f naught del x n minus 1 if there are n number of elements in this and similarly this becomes del f n minus 1 del x naught all the way to del f n minus 1 del x n minus 1 so this is called as the jacobian of this particular taylor series and so the point is if we are near a root right so you are at some point in the parameter space not the parameter space but the variable space x and this is the solution so if this were to be true then f at x plus s would be equal to zero this is that step s so if you are having a good knowledge of what s is going to be then after that particular step you would arrive at the solution therefore add the solution f of x plus s is equal to zero this implies zero is equal to f of x plus the jacobian of x times s and if s is not the appropriate step so if this is the solution this is x so if the jacobian approximation at this point makes you go over here then you hope that in the next iteration it will take you like this then in the next iteration like this and in the next iteration like this and we have we have seen this in python how this looks right so the step in order to evaluate what the step will be we need to solve this particular linear equation right we need to solve this equation and once this is solved we need to update what x is 
so x will be simply updated by x plus s so this is nothing but the update so this is the step finding and this is the update right let us consider a very simple example so y is equal to 1 upon b exponential of bx right and x square plus y square equal to 1 so we need to solve these two equations simultaneously and we know how the solution will look like how because we've seen this already that these two equations the root will correspond to the intersection of these two equations so let me draw an axis and let us draw the circle so this is a circle at the origin so it's something like this right it's a very poorly done circle but you get the point and the exponential will be something like this So obviously it will intersect somewhere along minus x as well some minus root but it will intersect over here as well so it is quite straightforward to graphically draw the root but solving it algebraically is not possible and therefore you have to resort to these kind of iterative methods so what is the way we can achieve this in petc so let us start programming and i will explain the different terms as and when they arrive so let us create a new file all right so first things first hash include petc.h then int main arc c int arc c Star star v. Let us save this. Let's call this nlin one dot c. All right. So first things first, we have to return let's see finalize, and we have to do an initialize. Apart from this, we must create the object that will help us in solving a nonlinear problem. In the case of the matrix solvers, we were using a KSP object. In this particular case, we'll be using a SNES object. So simply we declare SNES SNES like we did for ksp we will need two vectors one vector will be x and one vector will be y uh, r so vec x comma r so what is x x is a vector which consists of x naught and x1 which is a stand-in for x and y because we have a single array which will hold all the variables in that case this particular equation can be written as x1 is equal to 1 upon b exponential of b x naught this will be x naught square minus x1 square is equal to 1 and so let us try to write it in this particular form f of x equal to 0 so this particular form will be 1 upon b exponential of b x naught minus x1 and x naught square minus x1 square minus 1 is equal to 0 so this is that form that we spoke about okay so 
let us continue so we need okay so i did not explain what r is r is the residual okay residual of these two equations so it is obviously an array okay so this is required by the snes solver because it provides us what residual has remained from solving this particular set of equations all right so now that we have defined this we will do a pet c initialize so let me copy the code because pet c initialize looks the same so instead of this we will have solve a nonlinear equation all right after this we will create the vectors that we will require for our computation so back create let's see com world ampersand x so address of x back set sizes x comma pet c decide comma 2 so we want it to be of size 2 then vec set from options x in case we pass command line arguments and finally vec set so this is a new function that we're using vec set is to declare that all the values in x will be set to 1 so this sets both the values to be 1 and why do we do this because we're going to start with an initial guess of 1 comma 1 if this is not required we can do the entire sequence of setting a vector like we had done in the previous example um, in creating the right hand side of the poisson solver we had created the vector in this fashion we can do that well you don't need to do all this but you simply need to assign a value but because we'll start with a guess of 1 comma 1 it's convenient to use this particular function quickly finally let us duplicate x into r so vec duplicate x into r so the address of r is passed so at this particular step we have created the arrays so this all right so we've populated them with one now we must create the snes object it follows the exact same sequence that we had followed for ksp so first snes create let's see com world we have to pass the address of snes then snes set function snes comma residual comma the function comma null so let me show the command reference of set function so what it does is it tells the snes solver that whatever residual you have you store it in r and the function callback is funct so we will create it i have not yet created the function we will create a function which will provide these two values it's a simple function which will output a vector which will be comprised of these two things so all right okay well <laughs> there's some huh, okay so it has the snes context 
the residual storer, the function routine, and the user define um, parameters that you want to pass. But in this case, we'll not pass any user defined parameters. Okay, so that's it. It's as as easy as that. So we've defined this. Once we've set the function, we can actually go ahead and create the function right now. Let us not wait for it so let's see error code funct so the funct will sort of take as an input snes snes the vector x the vector f will be sort of returned and the additional thing we need is the user context so in this case it will be void pointer to user context all right so the vector f is something which is going to hold the return value so funct in this case is going to hold the return value so we have const double b is equal to 2.0 so by a const double we say that we are not even accidentally going to change the value of b all right all right so apart from this we need a pointer to the ax because whatever so ax is the auxiliary array for the vector x remember for defining a vector in pet c in case we want to print everything or run something in a loop we need an auxiliary array like over here we had a vec u exact but we needed an auxiliary array a u exact so that is the same thing all right so it's a constant array and the reason is we will not modify values of x we simply want to modify values of f that is why we will declare it as a constant double pointer if you want you can not do this but you run the risk of modifying x by mistake although you will feel not going to make that mistake but you know you should know <laughs> never underestimate your own sense of making mistakes all right so we have constant double b equal to 0 and a pointer to ax which will hold the vectors for x all right and we need a double star af that is an auxiliary array to hold the elements of the pet c object vector f all right then what do we need to do we need to tell that f0 will be this thing and f1 will be this thing this is what we need to tell and x0 and x1 are in the vec x so we must take these two give them to ax so that well, so that ax0 will be x0 and ax1 will be x1 this is what we need to do so first things first we will read the vector x into the array ax so vec get array read x ampersand of ax so why have i used vec get array read instead of simply get vec array it is a safety interlock to say that ax is only a read only variable by virtue of being a const double if it were to be only double we would have written only get vec well, get array which we are going to do for f in fact vec get array f comma ampersand of af so these two extract the pet c objects into c objects this is what it does and we have discussed this in the previous lectures as well all right so once we have this 
we're going to define AF0 as 1 over B, so 1.0 over B times exponential, so let's see exp real, then B times AX naught minus AX1. Similarly, AF1 is equal to AX0 times AX0 minus AX1 times AX1 not minus, this should be plus. I think I wrote the equation of the circle incorrectly. Well, this is where the mistake was. It's actually plus. This should be a plus. This should be a plus. All right. So AF1 is this. Now we simply need to restore the C object AF into the pet C of vector F just to complete the entire sequence. So vec, oops, vec restore array read x comma address of ax oops and then vec restore array x comma address of af and we will return zero if everything is successful so this is how we will create the code and if you feel like you want to modify these things to make your own solver the code will be available available on the website you can have a go at it all right so at this particular step we've created the function the function callback and the residual so all that we have passed so once we've set the function we need to tell snes that in case i pass some command line arguments it should set the snes object accordingly so set from options snes and we will use this lastly we need to solve snes solve snes null x so let me show you the function reference There appears to be some internet issue. Okay. All right. So if fx is equal to b, then we need to pass b. But because we have cast our equation in the form fx equal to 0, we pass a, as a null. And x is the solution vector. So we finally get x as the solution vector so what do we do once we have a solution vector obviously we're gonna have a look at the solution vector so we're gonna do vec view x let's see viewer std out world finally we must destroy all the variables that we've created so vec destroy x We destroy r uh, we have to pass the addresses not just the uh, so we have to destroy the memory addresses not well, you get the point the pointers and snes destroy ampersand snes so all the addresses are passed so that they're destroyed all right so that takes care of this little program so let me go ahead and change or change create a new target in our make file oops so we will make a new target we will call it nlin1 so control h nlin1 oops pass on and lin one so find next 
find what find next replace 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 it's as easy as that no hassle okay so we have our terminal open so let us make the target so make and then one oh, everything's fine so dot slash and lin one this will not run there's a bunch of errors the reason is we've not told how to make the jacobian so if you notice in this entire code we don't have a jacobian so minus snes fd so it says that it has to create the jacobian using a finite difference approximation and it will do that automatically you don't need to worry about it and finally let's have an snes monitor great so after just two iterations we have convergence what wait it doesn't look entirely correct well let us check our function callback all right guys i think there was a small error this should have been f now we are in a position to make because earlier it was only iterating for one iteration and i thought okay that's quite odd it cannot just converge in one iteration so let me make it again so now it should work fine so dot slash nlin one minus snes fd minus snes monitor okay so at the end of five iterations we do have convergence to the solution so what we can do is we can alternately have minus snes r tall 1e minus 14 the high degree of convergence so let's run it so it took one more iteration to converge to 10 to the power minus 16. so once you are near a root you sort of have a rapid convergence towards the root but far away from the root there is no guarantee you will converge quickly towards in fact the direction where convergence will happen okay so let me conclude this lecture over here uh, in this particular lecture to summarize we have looked at how we can solve a nonlinear solver using uh, how we can solve a nonlinear equation using the SNES object in Petsy. Next lecture, we're going to look at how to pass a Jacobian and we'll try to do a problem in of, of a nonlinear reaction using Petsy. Until then, it's goodbye.